Electrical contacts changed by the position of the point can be very useful. They can be used to light feathers on signals. Interlock the signals to the point's position. Switch the polarity of the point's frog or give control panel indication of the point's position. In this video we show how to provide contacts for solenoid point motors. To operate the point we've got Pico's solenoid point motor, the surface mount point motor. Pico's code is PL11. But what I'm going to say about the contacts applies to all solenoid point motors. The point motor is powered by a CDU. The common wire, the green, goes to the out minus of the CDU. And to switch it, we're going to use either the red or the black into the out plus. The CDU itself is powered by a 24 volt, one amp DC power supply. And that's gone into in minus and in plus. The 24 volt power supply is now plugged in the socket. The LED has lit on the CDU to show it's full of charge. Now, if we contact the red wire to the out plus, nothing happens because the point's already in that position. If we connect the black wire to that plus, point moves across. So now when we put the red wire in, this time something will happen because the point's in the other position. I've shown this to show that this solenoid point motor just wants a burst of electricity. It isn't continuously powered. Now to get a burst of electricity, we're going to need a momentary switch. This is a momentary switch. It is sprung loaded. So if we go that way, it connects that terminal to that terminal whilst you hold it over. If we go this way with the toggle, it connects that terminal to that terminal. But whilst it's in the center position, nothing's connected at all. So now I'm going to wire this up and show the point motor working with this. Here's the switch. The center terminal connects to the out plus and the two outside terminals connect to the black and red wires from the point motor. So when we move the lever, That's all working fine. Now this is a, as I mentioned before, it's a momentary switch because the lever always returns to the center where it makes no connections. It's also called a single pole switch and it's called a double throw switch. The double throw switch means it's got two positions. One position, as I described before, there, where the yellow connects to the red terminals and the other position there, where the yellow connects to the black terminals. Now, if we had two of these switches side by side, but with just one lever, that would be called a double pole, double throw, momentary switch. And we've got one of those switches here. So if by using this, we can use one of the two switches to make the point motor move the point, and we can use the other to operate some device that will give us contacts and the contacts we want to be in one position when the point's there and the other position when the point's moved across. Now, we actually make something that does exactly what we want and it's called the latching relay board. And here's the latching relay board. The latching relay board has four identical circuits. The connections to these circuits are from these terminal blocks. I shall explain just one of the circuits because the other three are going to be identical. These white blocks are the actual relays. The reason for using relays is because it isolates all the contacts. Uh, these relays are double pole, double throw relays. So they've got two sets of contacts. The common of each set is C. In one position, the C connects to A. In the other connection, C connects to B. So this is numbered on the outside of the circuit board, A2, C2, B2, A1, C1, B1. The remaining two terminals are labeled S and R, and these stand for set and reset. 
And when a pulse that's connected to naught V, I should just mention these two terminal blocks are where the power's connected. And this latching relay board is powered from 12 volts DC. That's the plus and that's the minus. We call the minus naught V. Right, so when naught V goes to set, the relay goes to one position. When it goes to reset, the relay goes to the other position. I can demonstrate that because I've got an extra wire connected into the naught V terminal. So if I touch it onto R, you could hear the relay click over and the red LED lights to show you that the relays move to the other position. When I connect the naught V wire to R, R remember is reset. So it returns the relay to the original position. So what you can see is, like the point motor, it just works on a burst of power to make the relay one way and a burst of power to make the relay go the other way. Now what I'm going to do is connect both the latching relay board and the point motor to the double pole switch, momentary switch, and then we can see them both move together. I'll just mention that the latching relay board has got a memory so that when power is removed, it actually remembers when you put the power back on which positions the relays were in before you switch the power off. And I can demonstrate that. That lights that up. That lights that up. I switch the power off. Now when I switch the power back on, we should get that LED lit and that LED lit and neither of the others lit. Remember that this momentary switch is two single pole switches side by side. So I've transferred the wires that operated the point motor directly onto here, red, yellow and black. And with the other part of the switch, remember these two separate switches totally isolated from each other, took the 0 volt black wire to the centre. This was a wire we touched onto R and S before. And I've connected R with the pink wire to one of the outer terminals. And I've connected S with the purple wire to the other outer terminal. So when the switch is thrown this way, that connects the common, the naught V, which is the common terminal, to the purple, which is a set. When it's thrown the other way, it connects the common to the pink, which is a reset. So you can see the LED light and un, uh, extinguish as the point motor goes. Now, just to prove that the contacts are doing something, I'm going to connect those up to LEDs so you can see the contacts working as the point changes. Now, remember that these contacts are isolated. That means there's no power on these, so we're actually going to have to connect some power from the 12 volts DC. I've wired up the LEDs as if they're two, two aspect signals with a red and green. When the point moves over, now the signals change. And this shows that you could have them on the two approaches. They might be ground signals or they might be ordinary signals. And the signal is going to go to red for the line where the, this line where the train would be derailed and green for the other line. And when the points change back, the signals change to the appropriate colours. Right, these would be common negative signals. The two short legs of the LED is go connect to this resistor and that goes to the naught V. The long legs of the LED is then go into these two terminals and the common terminal is connected to plus 12 volts. This white wire connects it together. To clarify how the latching relay board works, here's a diagram. The contacts from the relay go to B7, C7, A7, B6, C6, A6. So one contact, there's the common C, and that switches between B7 and A7. 
The same with this one, C6 as a common. And that switches between B6 and A6. So the power comes in here from the 12 volt power supply. And then if we take a connection from the 0 V, when that connection goes to set, this contact will go to A7, and this contact will go to A6. When this touches onto reset, we'll go into this position, C7 will connect to B7, C6 will connect to B6. So drawing the pins on the back of the um, momentary double pole switch, the center goes to naught V and the outer ones go to R and S so that when we throw the switch, we're going to make the latching relay board connect that way and that way, or throwing the switch the other way, it'll connect that way and it'll connect that way. The other three pins, which if you remember, this is effectively two switches with the same lever. They're the ones that go to operate the point motor. As often railway modelers will want to switch the frog, this piece here, of the point for reliability. And the wiring for that is very simple. The frog is connected to the common part and the two outer rails to B7 and A7. This leaves this set of terminals spare and there's no reason why you can't uh, operate more than one signal from the same set of contacts or you can as well as the two signals which we showed before you could operate LEDs on the control panel to show which way the points are set as well. So supposing you've got common negative signals, so you've got two signals and there's going to be a common wire out of both of them and that will go back to the naught V. The plus will go to the common here and then out of the signals you'll have a red and a green wire. Um, just mention there's a built-in resistors. So then this red wire can go to A6 and this green wire will go to A6. And then the green wire from here will go to B6 and the red wire from here will go to B6. And you'll get exactly the same operation as we showed in the example but only using one set of context to leave the other set of context spare for switching the frog. You might wish to operate a feather on a signal and the feather is going to depend on the points direction so again you need the contacts. Now you could operate the feather with our mass sequencer RI circuit board or our AirDAS 4 RI circuit board and what you would do Along both of these boards, there's six terminals. And the feather operates when you make that terminal connect to naught V. So to operate the feather, this naught V terminal has to connect to the OI terminal. So we can easily do that. Um, the naught V goes to the C7 terminal and depending on which side setting the point goes to, which is the diverging route, either B7 or A7 connects to OI. And that takes care of the feather. Suppose you've got two lines and they both converge together. And there's a signal on each line, which could be a two, three or four aspect signal. Now both of those can be controlled by either mass sequencers or ADAS4s and you could position them there and there or both on the same line there. But now when the point's set to the wrong direction so the train would derail you want that signal to be red and the other one to be clear. So what you do is you've got the two circuit boards which control each of the signals 
and the six terminals along the side and the end terminal is called RR and when that terminal connects to naught V then it makes that particular signal go to red so what you need to do is again connect the common to naught V and then B7 goes to RR and A7 goes to RR on the other board so this is a more sophisticated version of what we originally did because in this circumstance as a train travels past the signal which might be on green or yellow it will go to red as it gets further down the line and gets to the infrared detector so like a proper junction you can have both signals red at the same time there are other uses for the latching relay board for example it can be used for switching the track polarity on reverse loops or it can be used for interlocking points and signals as well as operating the R and S terminals by switches you can actually operate them with our infrared detectors such as the A.1 and the A.P however in this video to keep it a reasonable length we've just concentrated on showing how you can use it to provide contacts for point motors.